Hello everyone, it's Robin Dudley Howes, the Artsy Bohemian. Today I'm going to show you how to make these uh, paint uh, palettes or tabs or whatever, strips, paint strips. Um, they, I, I posted them on my Instagram a couple weeks ago and they got a lot of response, people asking questions about how I did it. And I just wanted to uh, show you because I love pe showing people how to make things. So I was inspired by a person who regularly um, posts on the graphics fairy. Her name is Diana from Dreams Factory and she did some swatches and I just thought they were so pretty especially the way that she used them in um, this really cool pocket that she made. So mine don't look like hers but you know that's how we work most of the time as artists we get inspired and then we kind of do our own thing so I'm going to show you what I did I will leave a link down below for the post that she did and in that post I believe there's also a template that you can download so what you're going to need is some watercolor paper it doesn't have to be expensive if you have a five below near your house basically everything is five dollars and below apparently <laughs> you know how that works I was leery to try this paper, but honestly, it works pretty darn good. It's 9 by 12. It's, uh, I believe it's a 400 gram, or no, it's 300 um, watercolor paper. And it's really nice, actually. It's fairly thick. It's not flimsy. So for 5 bucks, you get a ton of paper. And there's 36 sheets in here. So first thing you're going to do, I coffee dyed my paper. And the way that I do it, I wasn't going to show you this, but I know lots of people like to see this. Coffee, there's no mystery behind coffee dye. You basically buy cheap uh, dried coffee. This one is from the dollar store. It's not a dollar, but you know what I mean. Even Walmart probably has a really good price on it. I think they do. And I make mine really dark. So you're going to have to experiment. I probably use at least a half a cup of crystals in some boiling water. I don't put a ton of boiling water because I don't want to wait for the water to boil. So I just put enough to uh, dissolve the crystals, turn it off when it's boiled. I stir it around a little bit. And then I pour it into a jar and add some water to it, maybe a cup of water or something. Just depends on how dark you want it. And then I put it in the refrigerator because it will go bad. So I always have it. I also add like vanilla to it to make it smell pretty. And you're just going to get a brush and you're going to brush the coffee dye on. And just, you're going to have to wait for it to dry, of course. And I do all the areas here because I like using that part for ephemera, for junk journal ephemera. You can also take off the page and then dip it and then um, <clears throat> lay it out on a coffee, I mean a cookie sheet. If it's, if it's hot where you are, you can leave it outside and it'll dry pretty quick. it just let it dry and I'll come back and give you the dimensions on the strips and how big they are when it's dry you're going to cut the paper anywhere from five and a half to let's see what in yeah five and a half inches by one and a quarter I didn't really when I first made these, I did not measure them, so I was kind of guessing. You could make them a little bit longer if you want. You know, it's just up to you. These are the the rectangles on here are fairly small, maybe like an inch by like three quarters of an inch. So you're going to cut as many as you want, and then I you can use any watercolor you want. It doesn't matter. Um, these I don't think are around anymore, but there's tons of 
different brands that sell these travel size watercolor palettes and if you've been watching my channel for a while you've seen me use these a bazillion times I like them because they're small and I don't I just don't have a lot of room so I have a cool uh, palette and then a warm palette I also like using these because they're portable. I like to be efficient, if you can't tell already. You can use a regular paintbrush if you want with water, but these are great because they come in different sizes. I'll leave a link down below for the newer ones that I have. This is an old one from Stamping Up, and it's been the best. It's Pentel, and it's made in Japan, and it just, I can't believe it lasted as long as it did. It's just started fraying just recently, and I literally have probably had it for 20 years. Not too impressed with these. They're okay, but you know, I guess this is what you get. They're, these are by Tombow. So you also need a pencil. I like using a number, a, a, I think it's a number three, lead or seven, lead mechanical pencil. And I fold over the top edge. It's not going to be coffee dyed, so go ahead and coffee dye that part. I think what I did on this, because it was white when I folded it, I just covered it with some gold paint. I like using some wonderful gold paint by a company called Nova Color. They're not too far from my house. They're kind of well known in the artist community. They have premium quality paint for a fraction of the cost, like of Golden or Liquitex or things like that. So what you're going to do is <clears throat> you're going to take your um your your palette your strip here and go in approximately you're going to make five marks about an inch from the bottom and this will kind of give you a guide where to make your first rectangle and this is not exact i don't even know if i have the marks on here There's like one, two, three. Let's see here. Let me see how I did this one. You can kind of see the marks on this one still. It's not an inch, but you know, you don't need to get caught up. Basically, what you want to do is you're not going to be making five marks. You're going to be making four. Wait, one, two, three, four. You are going to be making five. I'm not good at measuring. I just literally just like eyeballed this. So I'm trying to make it so that you can have something to follow. But, you know, you want space that's fairly, you know, accurate in between so that you can make your little boxes, your little rectangles. So it's probably a closer to about seven eighths of an inch approximately here give or take you know an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch and um, I kept a little space up here and there's going to be a little tiny space down below here and then what you're going to do is you're going to just freehand this and this can be completely avoided if you want to just do the the template that I have given you um, down below um, I didn't like it because I I can't really print watercolor paper on my printer so I wanted if you download the the printable I gave you if you can print watercolor paper or even like you know cardstock that's great but it doesn't work so great on mine and I didn't really like the way it looked no you know disrespect to the gal that did this but I wanted it to look a little bit more hand-drawn so I'm just going to kind of copy what I did over here you can barely see the outlines from the swatches. So I'm just going to kind of make little rectangles. And um, I, it's, you know, it's kind of nice. It slows you down and it kind of will pull together your project that you're going to be working on and give and gives you a reference to always look at and then on top of it they're just kind of beautiful and artistic I think 
So these little lines here help me keep know where to kind of make these boxes and they look a little it looks a little bit more organic. Make this a little bit bigger. Make this one a little bit bigger so you can see I'm not doing this perfectly, but I'm kind of just going back and adjusting. And I'm going to do that to all of the swatches. So I did a couple of them and I found a, a method that might make it a little quicker. So um, I, you're still going to put the little marks where you're going to have your boxes. And the, the boxes, the rectangle boxes are going to go in between those marks. So then what you can do is once you make one template, you're, you can use this to do all the others. And I'm going to line it up and then I take the pencil and I mark a line from one point to the other but on the the one that's underneath it so I did that here and on on this side so I'll show you what I mean so I have my marks here there's one two three four five and I'm gonna take my the one that I made over here and it's only about it's not even a quarter of an inch to the side here that I'm leaving I don't even know what that is maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch it just gives you a nice uh, border here on the sides and again it's all kind of handmade looking so so I'm gonna mark I'm gonna kind of line those marks up. This one's a little bit bigger than the, the one below. And then I'm going to take and just go right across from where the rectangle is from one end to the other and stop. So you have your marks here, and then I'm going to do it on the other side. And then I can make a line in between to make the boxes. Okay, you could do this probably on a software program, but again, I just really like this handmade look. I like them to look more organic. Just take and line those up. And you can go in and, and take and erase those marks that you did initially. Oops, this one's too wide. So you're just going to do that to all of them until you have them all done and then um, I show you how I painted them. Alright, so we have our nifty little strips. Don't they look great? I think I just love this look so much better. It takes a little bit more time, but 
I think you'll love the results. So next thing I want to do, I'm kind of reverse engineering this. Um, you might want to make your strips before you do your project, but because I'm already in this project, I'm going to kind of choose the colors that have been the main parts of it. And so a lot of these images are from my porch prints. It's, uh, I think it's called shabby blue. I'm not exactly sure, but it's listed in the other videos where we've made some um, ephemera for this project. And this is one of the adorable little books that we made. So you can tell I can, I really am keeping it this really pretty kind of dusty, shabby, muted blue. Cause I'm not a real big blue person, but I really like these colors. So what I did was I um, looked at what I've used and I'm gonna do five strips. One's gonna be muted blue, of course, a dusty yellow, gray, dusty pink, and a dusty green. So everybody has different ways they use adjectives to describe their colors, but I'll kind of try to keep it to what I think looks good. I'm going to just use these as, a, as examples to kind of keep looking at what we've already done. And I'm just using these, this a limited color palette and making my own. Here's my cute little tags that I also use. These are just uh, jewelry making tags or just merchandise tags that you can uh, copy dye. I think you can still get some at maybe like the Office Depot or Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby might have them because they have a section just for jewelry makers for merchandising. So I'm gonna start with the blue. So here's my palette. It's gonna be more like this darker blue, but mixed, maybe with a little, a, a little bit brighter blue. So I'm just gonna be experimenting with you along here. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but um, that's the fun of it, so. And then I have my earth shades here. I don't know what happened to the guide. It's somewhere around here. And there's brown in here. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the blue, and I'm just going to take one of my little pens here, and I don't even, I think these are all kind of mixed up. There's the blue. And I'm going to really squeeze the barrel so I get an, a nice bit of water in there, and that's really pretty. And I'm just going to go out to the sides. I'm not doing anything to the, um, i put a little bit of a <clears throat> darker, maybe a little bit of brown in there and a little bit of blue, uh, to the paper like you can when sometimes when you do watercolor. I'm just doing direct to dry and I'm really squeezing a lot of water on there because I like it to pool and make a, a little edge. So that's my first color. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna really add more color. I'm just gonna squeeze it and make it really dull. It's kind of a nice transparent blue. And now I'm going to take a little bit more of that dark blue which I'm not gonna give you the names because these are her names, they're kind of silly names. I think, I don't know, I think this is called squid ink or I don't know what it's called, but it's cause it's kind of messed up. Now I'm gonna take that blue, I've put some blue on my um, tip and add some brown and see how it turns out. And, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna have a little piece of paper to wipe some of this off on the side, <clears throat> which is kind of what I've been doing. I have a little wipe off so ooh, it makes this kind of midnight blue. It's really pretty. And I'm squeezing the tip of the water to get that in there. I'm gonna add a little more blue because it's almost black. And 
more blue. Keep wiping some of this off. It's really pretty. I'm going to take some off because I want to see more of a, this darker kind of blue here with the brown. I grabbed a towel just to get more of that off. It's just too <clears throat> blue. Added some more brown to here. And I'm just going to keep adding, uh, squirting that paint off because it's too opaque. I don't want it opaque. I want, I like that more watercolor look. do too much because it'll start making the paper really weak. So that's kind of cool. And then now I am going to take that and water that down with just water up at the top above it. I'm going to add a little more blue to that. Because this has that brown in it. And a little more brown. It's kind of a cool midnight blue. And then the last one, I am going to just squirt, squirt the water on here and add white. Kind of brings it kind of a gray blue. Just wiping off my tip just to grab some more of that paint off. Very interesting color palette, and it kind of, it's some, some of these darker tones are not so much what I've been using. I would say I'm using more of these in the uh, colors. So I'm just gonna leave it and let it dry. And the next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my, and wipe off the paint that's on here. Let's try a green. bright green and then I'm going to add some brown to it because I want like an olive green a little bit of yellow a little tiny bit of brown that's too much brown I'll be adding more brown to it So I'm going to put that on this one. And this is really a, I think it's kind of a basic uh, palette. So you should be able to find any brand um, and just play around with the uh, different colors. I love this kind of, I call it olive green, but I'm not sure if it's actually called, would be called Olive. I've always loved this green. This is a really pretty color that um, I feel matches really well in different hues with what we're doing. And I just squeezed a bunch of water on there so it'll dry really cool. Now I'm just going to take and water that down even more on the palette above, I mean the square, the rectangle above. Lots more water, and this will be lighter once it dries. Now I'm going to mix that with brown, and I think I'm going to put a little bit of green on there first. Mix the brown over here. That's quite a bit. You don't need much brown on that, that's for sure. Oh, that's kind of interesting color. And 
And so this is all you. Whatever you want to do, you just do what you want to do. And mix a little bit more brown in there. Almost kind of like a military green. Definitely don't need that much brown if you want this darker green. So these are cool for, you know, these colors are cool if you're painting leaves on a flower. Okay, now I am going to squeeze my barrel and add, this will bring lots more water here. And then I'll be adding white to the one atop. So you can see there's a little bit of a pattern. This is something that I saw that uh, Debbie from Dreams Factory did. So I just thought it was kind of a simple exercise to see how you can see the different tones and hues, I guess you could say, light and dark. I really just love, I love the uh, that formula. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of this green with the white. Oops. I'm going to put some of that down. My white is getting kind of mushy. Oh, that's pretty. I just squirted some water on there to, again to make it pool. At some point I might fast forward so you can just not have to watch everything, but if you want to um, keep watching, then I'm loving these colors. So I'm going to do uh, maybe I will do, I'm going to put these to the side so I don't mess them up. Maybe I'll do the gray. Wiping my brush off. And at any point you could clean, keep cleaning your palettes. I just don't. I just kind of like how it looks if, whenever I start using them again. They get refreshed because, you know, they're watercolors. So all I could do is put water on there and they become live again. All right, so this is just the gray that I have here. It's kind of a soft gray, so I'm just gonna go with that. Oops, there's a lot of green in there still. Let's see what that looks like. This is just scrap um, paper that I've been playing on, so it's kind of fun to have scrap paper because fun things happen. To the side. I might start playing. I have this old Webster's Dictionary. I'm cleaning out our bookshelves, and lo and behold, we have this wonderful old falling apart dictionary. So let's play with that. take and lay this on top and kind of soak up all that watercolor. This will make for an interesting background later. Maybe even for this journal. Yeah. 
So I'm going to mix a little black with this. It's just too light. There you go. Like a steel gray kind of. I'm taking some of the excess because I like it transparent and then just squeezing water on the one above it. And then I'm going to add a little brown. I'm not sure how that's going to look, but that's just experiment to the one above that. Add some gray here, and then a little brown. Oh, that's kind of cool. Kind of taupe color. That's cool. I like that. Now I'm just going to water this one down up here, a little alum gray. And then the last one is just the white. So I'm going to do that for two more of these. Uh, strips and you can fast forward if this is boring I'm just going to keep it real time cool I like that did green so I'm going to do the yellow and the pink kind of a mustard color yellow look at how cool that's becoming I guess it would be more considered a yellow ochre because you know it's more of a brownish yellow which I like So I have this kind of almost yellow ochre here, so I'm going to just try that. And that's just cool on its own. Oopsie. And then squeeze my pen up here. I'm gonna add a little brown. Makes it even darker ochre. And then 
and squeeze my pen up on the top so it's a lighter version of that. And then mix it with white. Last one is the Dusty Rose. These are, there's several kinds of colors of pink, so I think I'm going to do this one, which is, it's called Frida in this particular mix, but again, those don't mean anything because she makes names up. So um, I think it's something I had used uh, in the first set, but of course I added brown to it to make it so, not so bright. So one of these. So you can see it's super bright. I'm actually gonna add a little more brown to that. Maybe a little more pink. And start at the bottom. Just watered it down up here. You know. You'll probably hear my daughter singing. She's home from school break. She's a music major. So you get some free music. Sounds like she's singing the dill right now. now. I'm mixing brown with it. See, that might be a little bit too much, but actually it's kind of cool. It's like a rosy brown color. This is the watered down version of that color here. And then I'll add white and we'll be done. We'll be able to see um, examples of what Diane did with hers. They're so cool what she did with them, um, with the strips. And I'm gonna show you what I did. And then in another video, I'll show you um, how to make the really cool pocket envelopes that she used, that she made. I She didn't really tell you how to make them. I kind of figured it out. I mean, she kind of did, but it was kind of an, it was hard for me to understand. I had to really experiment with it. All right, so aren't those cool? So I'm gonna come back and show you uh, the little 
bit of decorating that I do on it and the writing when they're they're dry. They're dry. I love the way they came out. They always look so much cooler when they're dry. And then I take a, um, originally I take in the mechanical pencil and made super tiny numbers above all the colors. And I really like the way the, the pencil looks. It's, you can either use a, um, a 0.3 or a 0.7. I don't even know what this one is anymore. I think the numbers came off. Um, or 0.007 or 0.003. Gosh, I can't remember. Um, but, you know, a really fine tipped pencil works. Also, a super fine tipped uh, art um, black pen works. These are from Arteza, and this is the tiniest one. It's so darn tiny that you can barely even see it. So, you know, either one, I think, or whatever, you don't even have to do any of that, but I like the way that it looks. So I just will start on a series of numbers and then just go up above here. So this was 138. I kind of like the pencil a little bit better. And the ink's running out on this, which is actually, I like it a little bit better on this one. And then, once that's done, since you've already, you already have these folded, you're going to take tiny little wisps of random pieces of cloth and make them really um, lightweight. I wouldn't use anything heavy duty, and if you do, use it sparingly. Of course, you know, we love our dyed cheesecloth, so little bits of cheesecloth works well. And then just staple them onto uh, the top up here. and. I, I don't like to be perfect. I just kind of squish them together. Oh, and then add one of the um, tags. And you can add, you know, a, a word or something to the tag. I'm just going to leave it like it is. And that's it. You staple them. And you just do that to all, all of them. I just love the way they came out. I hope you... All right, the finishing touch is adding this really amazing, super metallic sun gold. It's from Nova Color. Any gold you have will probably work, but I just love this color. It's super um, metallic. And I'm just going to use it um, on my fingers and just sparingly touch it to different parts of the pieces here. I'm going to fast forward this. All right, we're done. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly love making these, and I wanted to show you a, a page that I did in my one of my um, membership sites, my, my only membership site, <laughs> um, for the Secret Spooky Society. So this is a part of a page layout that we're doing for a dark academia journal. And you can see that um, this is like a mini version of what we just did. It was one of my first ones. It's, it was kind of like a example. And uh, it has lots of pockets. So there's some fun things that you can do or you don't have to do anything. It's just fun in doing it itself. The gal who um, I was inspired by did some really pretty uh, envelopes with these and I'll leave a, leave a link down below so you can see them at some point I will show you in another uh, YouTube video tutorial how to make those envelopes 
And um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoy it. And um, if you want to join the Secret Spooky Society for people who love Halloween and are sad when it's over, the information is down below. We have uh, four pieces of content every month, and that's why I'm not here on YouTube that much anymore because I'm super busy with that. But, um, yeah, so make sure you check out all my other videos. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free, and you, then you'll know when I am posting a video as well as signing up for my newsletter down below. It's also free. You'll be notified when I do YouTube videos, when I uh, launch a new class, and also when I have my artsy boutiques. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video.